Today we're going to talk about how high you should kick. Each individual has a specific height where they can kick without an injury. And today we're going to talk about how to determine that height. Hello, I'm Paul Dajczyk, founder of Elastic Steel, method of athletic conditioning, easy flexibility, and Dajczyk stretching technique. Last time we talked about the misconceptions about the high kicks. We talked about the mechanism of injury for the high sideline kicks and how to position the body to avoid the injury. Today we're going to talk about how high you should kick. Each individual has a specific height where they can kick without an injury. And today we're going to talk about how to determine that height. There are two ways to do it. One is empirical and one is visual. In biomechanics, we call that qualitative biomechanics and quantitative biomechanics. Quantitative or empirical is where we actually do the calculations of the joint angles. And visual or qualitative is where we see without doing the calculations. I prefer to do qualitative analysis of the kits as opposed to quantitative, but I will show you how to do both. To determine the angle of your kick, quantitatively, you would lie down on the side, bring one leg over and turn it out. You have to measure that angle. Then you would add it to 45 degrees angle that is allowed abduction in a hip joint. There are three problems with doing this quantitatively. Number one, when you lift the leg to measure the flexibility of the hips and the adductors, the hips may move. If your pelvis moves, you can calculate the one angle. In other words, if you tilt your pelvis to the side, you're going to be adding 45 degrees, but you actually have less than 45 degrees to add because your pelvis move and some of those 45 degrees have been taken out. So for example, a person who can bring his or her leg completely vertical, which is 90 degrees, will add that 90 degrees to 45 degrees and get a 135 degree kick. The second issue is, even if you look at it quantitatively, now you got 135 degrees, do you know what height of your kick is 135 degrees? You have to transfer that into a kick in height. And issue number three, now you got passive flexibility. Active flexibility and passive flexibility is not the same thing. Just because you have the range of motion for 135 degrees, doesn't mean that you can kick comfortably at 135 degrees. Looking at how high you should be kicking qualitatively, it's a little bit easier and makes more sense. So you see how high you can hold the kick. You see how high you can extend the kick comfortably. And at the same time, you see how high you can bring the leg without any pain. If you have the same height for at least two of those three qualitative kicks, that is your safe kicking height. I'm Paul Dajic. Thank you for watching.